Okay, dear students, today I'm going to make you revise poem on killing a tree. Okay, so uh, all of you take out this poem on killing a tree. Let's do revision of this poem. So in this poem, uh, you just have observed people cutting down trees, but one can they kill a tree? It is easy to do so. Let us read the poem and find out what the poet says on killing a tree. From this poem, any short question can be asked. Any MCQ can be asked. Long questions, any poetic device can be asked. So when you are going to make, when you are going to revise this poem, try to understand the main gist of the poem. What does the poet want to say? Okay. Revise its uh, word meanings thoroughly. Only then you'll be able to understand the meaning of the poem. So when you'll be able to do it so, only then you will feel confident while doing question answers. This poem is not so complicated. It is very simple. You require only to go through the gist, go through the central idea of the poem that through this poem, what does the poet want to say? Simple thing, if I say to you, I give you a knife and I say, okay, go and kill that tree. In the beginning, you have to give very much, uh, you can say harsh blows. But after doing so many efforts, you'll be able to kill a tree. But externally, you will say, yes, this task has been done. This tree has been killed. But it is not killed because after some time when it will be getting water, when it will be getting sunlight, so with the passage of time, it will grow again. So how can you say that it has been killed? Because from outward appearance, it has been killed, it seemed, but its roots are still there. So what is the task now? You have to eradicate those roots completely from the internal, you can say, a cave internal passage, which is under the soil. When this part will be taken out and it will be exposed to sun and with the passage of time, it will become dry, okay? Its color will change. Then you can say, yes, now the tree has been killed. Otherwise, only by having a jab of knife, only by attacking with knife, and you have cut the, you can say twigs and branches and roots from the outward, you can't say that tree has been killed. So you try to understand what is basically this thing? What is that? So it is a very simple thing that one of the person has been given a task, go and kill a tree. And he does this with the using an X and he says, yes, this tree has been killed. But what? Does poet want to say through this? Can anybody tell me? What does poet want to say through this? What is the central point? Yes, Divya. You come here and speak. You are uh, speaking so well because you are very near to the central idea of the poem. See, I have only explained you the meaning of the poem, but according to ninth class level, you, uh, you are not supposed to write down only the meaning of the poem. You are supposed to write down the gist, the main central idea of the poem. So Divya, what Divya has understood, she is going to tell you so i have understood that so i have understood that the poet is depicting that a simple jab, jab of knife cannot kill a tree so as a as in life the poet is depicting to make us learn that we if we are having a bad quality we just not show that uh, we are dealing with it we just need to uproot it from the bottom of our heart very well said very well said uh, so it means she has, uh, whatever she has spoken, that is absolutely correct. Okay, Ridhima also wants to say something. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, first of all, the poem on killing a tree, written by G. F. Patel, a uh, symbolic of the evils prevailing in the society. In the poem, the poet presents the tree as a parasite which consumes the earth nutrients by feeding upon the earth's crust, with the uh, which, according to the poet, is the destruction on the earth's fertility he is only saying that uprooting the tree is not a solution good you are also your viewpoint your perspective that is also good so after that dhiren wants to say something yes ma'am as dhiren uh ma'am uh, in the poem in the main central idea is that it's not easy to kill a tree and it's not a work of jab of knife if we need to kill a tree we need to make efforts and so it's like in the life we have to eradicate something uh, then we have to remove it from the roots as done in the poem good so very well said that if we what is the message that we are going to uh, you can say we what is the message that we are going to attain from this poem that if we really want to eradicate something it means if bad things reside in our heart bad habits bad uh, customs okay any bad thing evil is there so if we want to uh, remove that evil don't do, do it only to show if you really want to remove it you have to go in deep you have to eradicate you have to uproot from inside don't show it outwardly that yes it is done i have removed suppose i just take an example somebody is having a habit of telling a lie and he says no 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 i am going to give up this habit now i would not tell a lie so why that person is only showing he has to do its practice in practical way and he has to apply implement it thoroughly in his life and he has to eradicate it completely so suppose if any of the evil is there that is residing in our heart we have to uproot it completely only by saying that this has been i'm going to abolish it i'm going to stop it i'm not going to practice it it is not done at all so what is the main central idea of the poem uh, i can ask any of the child he or she has to come there and speak so for that i am going to ask nitya after nitya akhilesh coming start of थ्रू दिस पॉइम आई हैव अंडरस्टूड दैट अ ट्री कैन नॉट बी किल्ड विद सिंपल जैब ऑफ अ नाइफ एज a full grown tree has taken years to grow and the effort uh, has taken a long time and a jab of a knife is an effort of a few seconds so through this we can say that a uh, effort of few seconds cannot destroy an effort which has took so much love, so much time um uh if we have to uh, uproot something if we have to uh, kill something we cannot just kill it externally we have to uproot it from uh, we have to uproot it and so please do you have any view point so what do you think afterwards i'm going to give you some of the points you prepare these notes go through these notes these value points then poem will be whole poem will be very much clear in front of you come here and one thing more i want to tell you i even i speak it wrong it is not poem it is poem its correct pronunciation is poem 
The central, the central idea of the poem is that it's not possible to kill a tree from simple jab of knife, as that tree has taken many years of sunlight, sunlight, minerals, and soil to become as uh, strong as it is now. Similarly, if we want to remove something um, evil from our hearts, we can't just do it um, by saying that we have done it. So, so we um, we must uh, uproot the evil thing from our heart, from uh, the roots. So in order to uh, So now listen, whenever you revise any of the poem, so it's better that you write down all the value points in order, so you have gone through the poem. I have told you what is the exact meaning. You all are giving your opinion, your perspective, your viewpoint, that what do you think it is, what is the central idea? So here I'm going to provide you a list of its value point at a glance, when you will be looking at all the value points thoroughly, so with le in less time, whole of the poem will be revised. And keep these notes, revision notes with you, because during your revision test, during your exam, these notes will be very much beneficial for you. Keep this thing in your mind. Okay? When you want to score good marks, it's very good that if you write down the name of the poem. So who is the name of the poet? Who is the poet? It is G. Patel. And he is the poet. You have to, but see, you add up this name and you will start writing its answer. It is a smart way to give beginning to your poet answer that this poet wants to say or this poet has put a very symbolic meaning. This poem has a symbolic meaning. So what is a symbolic meaning? That evil is inside us. Evil is inside us. One needs to, one needs to uproot. Uproot means Eradicate. Eradicate it completely from inside. Okay. Half job done is undone work. Do your work completely. Do your work. Completely. That's why I've given you one example in the beginning. Suppose I give you a task, go and kill a tree. So this job is not done if you don't eradicate it completely. It means if you are going to start any of our task, any of our assignment, any of our work, Put your heart and soul to that work. So this is also a theme of a poem. This is also a central idea of a poem. Put your heart. Put your heart and soul, soul to that, to the assigned work. To the assigned work. So these are the value points. If you write down all these value points, the poet advocates, advocates totality of a work. Totality of a work. It means if any of the work is with you, you have to do that work in a total sense, in a complete sense. So these all you can say value points I have added so that you can understand the main gist of the poem. What is the basically gist? So I have had 
otherwise if you go through this poem in one reading you'll be able to understand but what is its hidden meaning what is the gist what is the central idea what message does the poet want to convey through this poem you have to understand this thing clear so write down all these value points and with the help of these value points you can revise this poem within you can say 2 3 minutes if you look at all these notes you can recall during your exam preparation what is what was being discussed in class what was being you can say revised in class Hmm. Yes, yes. So now, if any of our short question is asked, if any of our long question, आगे आ जाओ मैम. If any of our short question is asked, any of our long question is asked, but if this uh, central uh, idea related to that central idea points are written, then gist will be very much key. so i think one question is very much sure from this poem mcq can be asked short question can be asked long question can be asked but if these points are very much clear in your mind you will not face any kind of problem whether question is from your book or whether it is asked from any book you will be very much confident related to this so to understand that meaning of a poem that is very easy by doing having a you can say reading for only once you will understand this poem is very easy what is given there given there is what symbolic meaning what is symbolic meaning it means it has some hidden meaning hidden meaning it means this poem is written why in class 9 to give you that some moral ideas so what is the moral idea that when when any of our task when any of our assignment that is given to you okay there is a, you have to bring to at end but you have to put your heart and soul in that and suppose any of the evil is residing in our heart and we want to abolish it we want to finish it eradicate completely so we have to go deep we have to practice it in detail only then you will say that yes this task is done i have uprooted it completely and half of the job done is not you can say considered a complete task this job it is just like undone work so if you will be going in detail going in deep you will be working on that only then it will be considered yes you have put your heart you have done it fully and you have done justice with your work and in that way you will feel uh, you can say satisfied by doing that task am i clear with this and next question very much important question about poetic devices which are used in this poem okay so let's discuss about poetic devices very first poetic device that i am going to discuss with you that is used in this poem that is metaphor can anybody tell me why when to use metaphor can anybody tell me when to use metaphor metaphor is used when two things are compared compared compares two things when there is a comparison between two things we say metaphor is used but all but these qualities are not same whatever two things are compared qualities are qualities are not same qualities are unlike so can anybody pick up any example of metaphor from this poem go through this poem and find out two 
uh, one line or two lines in which you think that yes, comparison is being made. Ma'am, leprous height. Yes, very good. It is leprous height, and out of its leprous height, I'm going to underline also. Okay, very good. The uh, the rain. It is leprous height, and another. And another example. Ma'am, bleeding bath. Leprous height. And next example we have is anchoring earth. Anchoring earth. Can anybody tell me why it is an example of metaphor leprous hide and anchoring earth? Tell me. Leprous hide means uh, you can say discolor of a tree. Discolor of a tree. Because of absorption of you can say sunlight, water exposure to air and water, the earth would you can say uh, you can say the color of that. Uh, tree would start changing. So leprous hide. This metaphor is used to make comparison between two unlike things. Okay. And next device we have used in this poem is alliteration. Can anybody tell me what is the use of that alliteration? Alliteration means repetition of repetition of any sound, any vowel. Okay. In a, uh, you can say there are so many examples of alliteration. Let's pick up those examples. I'm using another color for picking the examples of alliteration. You type in chat box. Uh, okay, from paragraph number second, tell me any example of alliteration. So hack and chop, but this alone won't do it. Not so much pain will do it. The bleeding bark will be. So tell me the example of bleeding. Uh, yes, alliteration. It is bleeding bark because B and B has been repeated. So we have picked up this example of alliteration. Okay, now I'm going to read. I'm going to read. Third stanza. No, the roots is to be pulled out, out of the anchoring earth. Okay, now tell me in anchoring earth, which poetic device is there? Metaphor. Metaphor. Very nice, very good. So for a metaphor, I'm going to use green color. And for a alliteration, I'm going to use pink color. Now tell me, do you find any lines here that denotes that alliteration poetic device is used or pulled out entirely out from the earth cave and the strength of the tree exposed the source white and wet, the most sensitive hidden. Any example of alliteration? Yes, very good. Very good, Kabar, Noor, and Jashan. White, and, white and wet. Yes, very good. It is white and wet because W and W is repeated. And no problem, beta. 
what happens to you w and w is repeated in same line okay now all of you tell me the rhyme scheme of this poem what is the rhyme scheme of this poem yes when you are not able to find out any rhyme scheme ma'am no rhyme scheme write down you will be writing no rhyme scheme i have told you one word when i was explaining you poem ma'am free yes. words yes the poem is written in free words so this poem is written in free words not using any of a rhyme scheme now i'm going to discuss uh, one question with you what is the meaning of bleeding bark what makes it bleed do you think if you struck knife on a tree blood will come out one of the and the white liquid comes out yes it will ooze out so you can use such kind of vocabulary word ooze ooze means come out another word for ooze is emerge so bachche when you will be writing such kind of answers try to put vocabulary of this level when jab of a knife will be struck on that tree something will emerge out something will ooze out you can say one of a some liquid substance white white of white color so this is considered as a bleeding bark this is considered as a bleeding bark it means when any attack is done on our tree liquid will start oozing out and this uh, uh, substance comes out when any hacking hacking is done when any chopping is done so it makes that bark is going to bleed actually it is not bleeding that substance comes out and it is considered as bleeding clear now next question what is the meaning of anchoring earth and earth k what is anchoring earth The the means the yes, yes. The, that are holding the uh, tree, the soil that is holding the tree. So anchoring earth basically that is a soil. You can say in which roots of the trees are kept. Basically, soil. So anchoring earth is considered like a soil. Which soil in which earth uh, in which sorry tree roots are kept and earth cave what is basically earth cave you you have to go in detail in deep earth cave refers to same but yes so the soil and roots they are going to make a grip of a tree that they, they are giving a you can say a uh, tight grip but cave cave gives a shelter yes area occupied by roots of a tree you can say just like a cave it is giving it a shelter it is giving a place it is giving a shelter to all the roots so the area that is giving shelter to the roots of a tree this area is considered just like an anchoring cave i think this question was also asked in your pt3 wow. exam mm -hmm. and very less students have written it in detail mm -hmm. this question was carrying two marks and you were supposed to frame two paragraphs in one paragraph you were supposed to uh, describe anchoring earth mm -hmm. only the upper layer of you can say roots but cave means to go inside shelter where roots are going deep within and it is getting a proper place where it is not exposed to sun air and water its roots are deep within and this place is considered earth anchoring cave but anchoring earth only the roots that is giving grip okay so in this way you were supposed to explain this answer in detail 
clear beta now this is your revision we are able to do revision of this form whatever the value points we have written you will be revising it thoroughly okay and tomorrow we will be taking another form or another chapter to be revised clear beta yeah.